Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we have another blockbuster that everyone was looking forward to on Netflix. Melissa McCarthy, Academy Award winner. It's gonna be great, right? It's gonna be great! Okay, Paul, uh, give us a quick rundown on who's in this great new superhero Netflix movie. Okay, you have Octavia Spencer. Academy and, Award winner. Yeah, and uh, you have Melissa McCarthy. Participation Award. <laughs> and uh, did you know that the evil villainess was Mantis from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. You didn't know that? I, I didn't, didn't know, know that, yeah. Okay. Um, and what happens is, I guess there is like some kind of asteroid that hit the Earth. And some people gain mutant powers, but only the psychopaths, the sociopaths of the world gain these powers because their brain functions differently. And there's this one little girl, uh, it starts off when they're, in, when they're in high school or something like that. And her goal is to become a biochemist to give regular people powers so that they can defeat these bad guys that they call uh, miscreants. Miscreants, yeah. because her parents were killed by one. Yeah, so she's on a, a vendetta mission and the whole thing is she becomes friends with uh, Melissa McCarthy's character in high school. They break apart because they have a fight, and then they get back together in adulthood, and hijinks ensue. Hi, hijinks. Hijinks. That's what we'll call it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna say it. Um, Melissa McCarthy should never work with her husband in writing a movie ever again. He is killing her career. Is I think it's Ben Falone, uh, Falcone. Ben Falcone. Ben. Uh, oh, ben. We'll call him Ben. But he's written such great hits for her as The Boss, Tammy. I mean, her worst films are every single one that he's written for her. Life of the Party. Life of the Party. You, you really didn't like that. Oh, one. and by the way, uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, Thunder Force, which we're reviewing right now, <laughs> is being added to that list. Is definitely on that list. This movie was garbage. Oh, well, wait. Wait, I liked the setup of the movie. I thought As, until Melissa McCarthy and Octavia came into the movie. Yeah, until <laughs> until, until they became adults and actually you know, the story has been set up and has started. I was thinking, wow, I'm gonna like this movie. Finally, they've they've written a movie that is sort of not been done before. It's kind of it's cool, good right. setup. The, the, the whatever asteroid thing that gave everybody their superpowers and, and they explained it well. And I thought, okay, this is going to be great. But then it did not get great. No. So it, what, do we, what is it that you specifically didn't like about it? Okay, well, there were a, a couple of funny points in the movie. Okay. I, well, I'm interested to know if one of your funny parts is the one I'm... Literally two funny parts. Okay. okay. And both of them were the same part. The same thing happened. Where... Every time, okay, so there's there's a couple of different characters. One of the bad guys is uh, Jason Bateman plays Crab Man. Crab Man, right? Half Crab Man. So, so he's got these he's got these arms and they're he's basically. It he's sounds a crab. funny, right? <laughs> I thought it was funny. And and every time he has to flee the scene, he puts his arms up and walks sideways, like <laughs> like, like a crab, like, like a crab, like the crab. <laughs> I laughed at that part because I thought, ah, oh, that's it, that's humorous, and he did that twice in the movie. Really, those are the only two times that I even chuckled. Okay, what about the guy in the diner when he's trying to tell her the metaphor and he's talking about skipping rocks? <laughs> okay, that was, a, that was okay, too. I laughed for five minutes and my wife got mad at me. Yeah, you could be the rock, you could be the lake, you could be... <laughs> and, and you spend all this time searching for this rock and then you throw it. And just under the surface of the water, there might be a salmon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you, and you hit the salmon in the head. <laughs> and it gets worse, the salmon had babies. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So that, that was hilarious. So, okay. So the crab hands and the uh, rock skipping story, the only two no, funny wait, parts wait, of this what movie. about when uh, the leader of the bad guys keeps on killing his henchmen? No. Andrew. It, it wasn't it funny. Wasn't, it, it wasn't it, funny. I didn't laugh, but I thought, okay, well, I see what they're trying to do here. Hmm. They're not making me laugh doing it because it, it really became predictable. A lot of things in this movie became predictable. Like, oh, they have this car and they're having a hard time because they're both big women trying to get into this little car. And I thought, yeah, they're going to keep doing this. This is not, movie. this was definitely not a body positivity movie. 
No. Uh, in fact, it's a typical Melissa McCarthy movie, movie where it's a lot of slapstick. She plays, oh, I'm a good-hearted, nice person who's really overweight and really stupid besides that. Mm -hmm. Because she's just stupid in I mean, this. Like, like how, she, how she gets her powers is stupid. But you know what? I don't think so. Like, yeah, she's a stupid person, but I appreciate that. Like, look at any sitcom, and, and the dad is always overweight, and stupid, and it's funny. And just because Melissa McCarthy's doing it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I appreciated it. I thought how she got her powers was predictable, but it was still humorous. But she's not. You thought that was. Off. You thought that was humorous. I thought she was such a dope going through all these different things, like like absolutely brain dead dopey. And I thought that was okay funny. Now I'm not saying that the whole movie was funny because I found a lot of the jokes. I, there, there were no, there were. It, it looked like they were letting um, Melissa McCarthy ad lib a lot of lines. Everything was ad lib. And, Everything. And, and it went on too long. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, okay, we'll get this over with. Get this over with. This is the Ghostbuster syndrome, where they let the women vamp, and let them use their comic genius and just go on and on, and ad lib and just edit what and they it, want to and use. It, and it killed Ghostbusters, and it killed this film. Like, I think the spirit of it is funny, but the execution doesn't hit my funny bone. No. Oh, at all. Even the climactic ending, when they're fighting and all, all this other... Like, all of a sudden the crowd starts cheering them, and she's doing a whoop whoop, and then, oh my god, it was so cringy. It was just god-awful. Yeah, yeah, that was good. God-awful yeah. stuff. Um, oh, and I heard... She has a daughter who's just Octavia Spencer's character has a daughter who's just almost. I thought it was her, from from when she was a kid. Right. <laughs> like they look that similar to each other. Um, who and and Melissa McCarthy goes off on these old sitcom jokes. Oh, she looks like Urkel. Or didn't you watch that episode of this? Don't you remember that? Dun, 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 dun. Don't you remember? And like it. Oh my God! It was just terrible, terrible. No, I don't think terrible. <laughs> I don't think it the the situation was terrible. I just think the the length of it, like if just do something with impact. They did don't the Urkel joke. Five minutes. They did the Urkel joke for literally two and a half, three minutes. Yeah, yeah. and you're saying, okay, wow, like maybe it was funny at the first, but now it's going on way too long. But the problem was it wasn't even funny at first. Yeah, and then they continue it. For and that it's almost time. like they know the audience may not know who Urkel is anymore. Netflix audience might not know Urkel, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's our, our generation, we know who that is. But, and then they say, well, we'll start, you know, did I do that? And I mean, even her impersonation of did I do that? And then she starts this, you know, I knew that, like, he didn't do that in the show. Oh, I, I cannot tell you how much I hated this movie all, of, all the way through. What about Octavia Spencer? How did you boring. feel about her? One of the most boring characters ever. In a, and she was supposed to be boring. And she's a good actress. She's a great actress. Yeah, Hidden she, figures. She, like, she didn't want to be there. Good actress. Well, they've this been, was Melissa bad. McCarthy and Octavia Spencer have been friends for 20 years in real life. So yeah. I, I fully believe that they wanted to do the movie. It's not like she was like cornered into doing the movie, I don't think. Right. But the part that was written for her was extremely bland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Netflix says she signed she beca to me she became the Netflix female Adam Sandler. Here's a bunch of money McCarthy. McCarthy became the female Adam Sandler. Maybe. Here's a bunch of money write some movies. Oh, we got ridiculous sex and we got this crappy movie and then we got this crappy movie. Ha ha ha, but we got millions of dollars. Thank you very much Netflix. That's what this is. Here's a bunch of money. Uh, oh well, you know what? Your, your Thunder Force. It's a it's a superhero, but it's it's women, and they're not really superheroes, and it's going to be funny. Well, the outline is okay. The script looks a little weak, but it's okay. Melissa McCarthy, you can ab lib, and we know you're really funny. You'll make it funny, and it uh, did not work. It's like they had a ten page script, yeah. and she just ab libbed the rest, in the rest of the story. No. The problem is that at the end, they kind of left it open to be a franchise. They'll never be a franchise. I don't know. They green light 
all of Ben Falcone, Melissa McCarthy projects. Yeah, well, they should not. Because every one that he's written and she starred in has been her worst films. So we're going to uh, put a petition in the description <laughs> that I want you to sign. Uh, I know, I know. Hey, I'm glad you guys are still together. I'm glad you like working together, but you shouldn't work together. Mm -hmm. You really shouldn't. Uh, the movie she's good, like Spy. You thought he wrote Spy. Did not write Spy. You know why? Because Spy was good. <laughs> it felt like uh, a TV movie. It did. It's very light. Netflix, it is. Very light, uh, appealing more to women, probably. Um, I don't. I don't think women will like this movie at all. Well, I don't think a lot of people will like this movie. No. But I'm pretty sure its target audience was probably women because it was a very light uh, TV esque plot, and uh, I think women are more forgive, forgiving for those. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, they'll, they'll watch the hallmarks and stuff like that. Like I said, right? I watched. I watched and enjoyed the first 15 minutes of this movie. After that, it was complete and, crap. Until the stars showed up. Yeah. Which like, is not the good sign of the movie. Like, what was that, like, like that dream dance number? Oh, I know. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I already put that out of my head. And, uh, oh. Like, that went on for 10 minutes. Yeah. And there's, he's, <laughs> he's smiling during that. And I know what he's smiling. He's going, this is so stupid. <laughs> he's saying to himself, this is so stupid. Why are we doing this? But why does he always go into Melissa McCarthy movies? I don't know. He's I, only been I, in one. I like Jason Bateman. I, he was in Identity Thief, and, and that was it. And another one, which I can't remember the title of, and this one. So they must be friends in, in real life, and he's Maybe. okay with this stuff. Maybe. And, he, and you know what? Netflix, here's some millions. And yeah. he said, thank you very much. Maybe. Why so, not? I uh, didn't hate this movie as much as you guys did. You guys did. Okay, uh, I'm curious. Uh, I can't give it a six because I gave Kong and Godzilla a six. A six. And if you think these are on par, this doesn't deserve. A you six. do not deserve to ever review a movie again. But I was, I was, <laughs> like my six is. Well, it wasn't good, but I'm not raging. Okay. Um, my five is. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed. So I'm gonna give it a five point five. Five point five. A five point five. Five point five. Oh my god. And I'm going to upgrade Godzilla vs. Kong to a 6.5. What I gave it. Yes. I think. Yeah. This, right. for me, is a 3. This is a 3. Yeah. Um, well, it has a 4 on uh, IMDb. Okay, so well, I'm, I'm close. I'm going to drop below them, too. I'm going 3. Uh, the only thing I laughed at, or even chuckled at, in this entire movie was Jason Bateman with the crab when he ran and hid behind a pillar. Yeah. I was actually I upset with Dawn. When he said, hey, can you watch this? And that's why I watched it. I was mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, brand new on Netflix, everybody. Can't wait for you not to watch it. Hey, tell us what you think. <laughs> if you, It's free. If you have Netflix, it's there. Why not watch it? We just told you lots of reasons. Um, <laughs> to not waste it. your time. Um, I'm sure there's some reruns of Beverly Hillbillies or something yeah. on Netflix you can find that is much better than this, even. Yeah, I want you to watch it and tell us what you think. Tell us how off-base we are. Yeah. And let us know. Like, Melissa McCarthy is so hit and miss. She can be really, really good. And then she could be what she was in this film. Annoying and very superficial, very predictable, and very boring. Mm. Where she just goes on and on and on, like us. So let us know in the comments down below. Until next time, I guess, we'll see you on the channel.